Jeremiah chapter 6. Now the nation of Israel and the nation of Judah the split north and south. They have sinned. And God has sent Jeremiah and Isaiah before him. You got to speak to these people before judgment comes. You got to tell them what they're doing wrong, what they need to get done to get right with me, God. If not, the axe is going to fall. And I say the axe because Nebuchadnezzar is called the battle axe. And I'm telling you, I've read and studied Jeremiah. They don't get right. They don't repent. And the axe falls. And we're coming to crisis today in the world. That the world and not just America, God has sent forth his prophets. God has sent forth his preachers. God has sent forth the word of God. And we are seeing some astonishing things. That is happening to the world. And the world rejects God. The world won't fear God. The world won't turn to God. As a matter of fact, they get even angrier with Him. And they're trying to shut the preachers up. And the churches have shut up totally where they've gone on the side of the devil. Because Revelation chapter 3, the devil's in the church while Jesus Christ is standing outside the church. And when we look at Jeremiah, we look at Judah, and we look at Israel, we can see America and we can see the world. And it's not going to get better until the Lord Jesus Christ comes. The Baptists are not going to make it better. The religions are not going to make it better. The, the Republican Party is not going to make it. Jesus Christ will make it better. O ye children of Benjamin, gather yourselves to flee out of the midst of Jerusalem. Now, when you look at Joshua, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, Joshua, and you look at the land, the visions of the children of Israel, Jerusalem, though it's called in Judah, Judah is a big chunk. Judah gets a big chunk of the land which his brother Simeon is in and Benjamin is in. And Jerusalem, Jebusai, is actually a city in Benjamin. And blow the trumpet, warning war in Turkey or Turkey. And set up the sign in the fire of Beth Akron. For evil appeareth out of the north, Babylon, Assyria, and great destruction. I'm telling you, in the church age, as a man the King James Bible, born again, sent by God, there is great destruction coming to the world. After the church is raptured. And Christians fear that the book of Revelation is, is written to the church age. And Matthew's written to the church age. Uh, that's tribulation. In Revelation chapter 4, the church is gone. And she does not return unto Revelation 19. All what you read in Matthew is not the rapture of the church. It's the tribulation and the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is the first advent as a lamb born in the manger in Bethlehem. Then there's a period he's going to come for the church, but he's not coming to the earth. He's going to meet his church above the cloud. He does not come on the earth. And then when he comes back again the second time on the earth, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is coming back with fierceness and anger. He is going to devour his enemies. He's going to lock Satan up for a thousand years. He's going to put the Antichrist and the false prophet in the lake of fire forever. And he's going to give the land of Israel to the land of Israel to Israel. And he's going to give them a new heart. He's going to cleanse them of their sins. And there'll be no more sins forever. He'll be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords.
I have likened the daughter of Zion, Jerusalem, to a calmly dedicated, delicate woman. The shepherds with their flocks shall come unto her. They shall pitch their tents against her round about. They shall feed every one in his place. Now, you, the shepherds, they're not warriors. And they are military strength when it comes, don't you hurt my sheep, don't you hurt my, my lambs, don't you hurt my rams. David said, listen, I battled a lion and I battled a, bar I battled a bear. They attacked, they attacked my, my sheep. And God says there's great destruction coming from the north. And when that great destruction comes, there's going to be a bunch of shepherds. They're going to travel. Going to, oh, this is a nice little place to stay. Pitch our tents, let the sheep be. In the land of Judah, in the land of Israel, that's been destroyed. And basically, shepherds are, they're peaceful. Prepare ye war against her, Zion, Jerusalem. Arise, let us go up at noon. Woe unto us. So here's the military, here's the enemy. All right, let's go get her. Then woe unto us. That's Israel, Judah, for the day goes away. It's getting later and later. And the shadows of the evening are stretched out. Arise, let us go by night, and let us destroy her palaces. There's the enemy again. And if Judah and Israel don't get right, Israel's already going into captivity. Destruction. And they don't get right. They don't get right at all. They even had palaces when uh, Jesus died. For thus has the Lord of hosts said, the word of God, Heal you down tree, cast a mount against Jerusalem, speaking to the Babylonian army. This is the city to be visited. <laughs> There's a visitation for destruction. She is wholly oppressed in the midst of her. As a fountain casts out her waters, you know, the water fountain, so she casts out her wickedness. Violence and spoil is heard in her. Before me, continually is grief and wound. God saying, you know what? The wickedness, the violence, the sin, the iniquity. That's why I've sent an invading army. And they're not getting right. They're not doing right. They're not trying to appease me. They're not trying to seek me. We've seen that five chapters. Be thou instructed, O Jerusalem, by Jeremiah, Isaiah, God. Least my soul depart from thee, and it will. Least I make thee desolate, and he will. A land not inhabited, for a while until Ezra and Nehemiah show up. That's a shame. Now God's not all finished with the Jew. God ain't finished with the Hebrews. But he's going to send a remnant. You got Daniel. He's going to Babylon. Ezekiel will be in Babylon. God's taking care of them and those that are in Babylon. And there are some that stay in the land. He's not completely, you know, eliminating the Jews. But they are his people. And he is angry with them. And we will see the total destruction later when we get to Ezra and Nehemiah. That the Babylonian army did. Verse 9. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. They shall thoroughly, thoroughly, completely glean the remnant of Israel as a vine. And he's saying, you know, here's a vine. 
got grapes on it. And Babylon's going to come three different times. Nebuchadnezzar is going to go there, he's going to grab some of the grapes. First fruit. He's going to come back, he's going to grab some more little grapes. Then he's going to come back, he's going to grab all of the grapes. And then when he comes back the third time, grab all the grapes, you're going to find the grape dead. You're going to find the vine dead. But there'll be little tiny other plants, and the plant, the vine has been moved to Babylon. And that plant won't come back to Jerusalem under Ezra and Nehemiah. And that plant won't be completely planted without weeds when Jesus Christ grabs them as a plant and brings them into the land of Israel. And he completely removes all the weeds, removes all the curse, and plants Israel as a noble vine in the land. And cleanses them permanently, eternally. Listen, Israel went back and roams there. Israel's going to go back and they're back, then the Antichrist is going to be there. And when Jesus Christ comes back, he's going to remove all the enemies. Turn back thy hand as a great gatherer into the basket. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? And they're not listening. They're not giving it. Look at chapter 5, verse 21. Hear now this, O foolish people, without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. God saying, who shall I speak to? They're not listening. Jeremiah is listening. That seems to be the only one. And we'll find a few others listening. Behold, their ear is uncircumcised. Of world, it's it's got extra growth. It's they can't hear God. They don't want to hear God. They cannot hearken because they're not listening. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. What God is saying angers them, insults them, makes them offended. Where what God is saying should be, I love you. I want you to get right. I want you to do right. I want you to be pleased with me and I want to be pleased with you. I don't want to hear it. And the aspect of that one elderly woman I have at the farmer's market, and you want to hear it. Why can't she hear? Because I got uncircumcised ears. There's flesh in the way. Take your fingers out of your ears and listen. No, because I get offended. Well, grow a backbone. Get right with God. And the church doesn't want to hear it because they're wonderfully great and excellent. God is well pleased. It ain't us that's doing anything wrong. It's that the oddball preacher. Yeah, he's got a King James, but he takes it to the extreme. We can't listen to him because, you know, all he does is kick us. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. We don't want to hear it. We want to turn the television evangelist on. We want to turn the radio preacher on. Anything but what God has to say. We want you to tickle our ears we read last night. We want you to give us the book of Revelation, but don't you give us sins. We are in a period of time today that most of the majority of churches are studying the book of Revelation. And they're not studying 1st and 2nd Corinthians, the carnality of the church that they are. Well, Paul's my favorite preacher. Well, Silas is my 
important preach. Well, I've heard Peter preach, and he preaches better than him. Oh, man, you got to go down to Jerusalem here, James. James, an excellent, great preacher. We've got the best church here. <coughs> and Paul's, you know, sarcastic. Oh, I wish you guys were raining. They're over there saying, we're raining. Paul's like, I wish you were raining. You're carnal. And today I call the Baptist Catholic churches. You're carnal. You got carnival events. You got you know everything but the Bible. You got playtime. You got fun time. You got entertainment time. But you have no Bible. And then you cry out, oh, we want a revival. And your programs and your procedures in the churches are everything but the Bible. They are, therefore, I am God, full of fury of the Lord. God is angry. I am weary with holding in. God is long-suffering. As he is today in the church age, he is long-suffering in Jeremiah. And God saying, I'm about had it. I'm about ready. I am about to drop the axe. You know, people, they think that God is, you know, he's going to hold out. He's going to wait forever. No, not necessarily. You know, the worst thing, you know, I wish that Christian would get out of this job. I wish that Christian would stop preaching to it. I wish that Christian would go. And maybe the one of the worst things that could happen for you guys say, okay, fine, I'll take him away. I'll move him somewhere else. I've had that happen. I spent four years in, in the public ministry in Norwich, Connecticut. We were in three different places, four different places in Norwich, Connecticut. Finally, the Lord said, hey, I want you to go to Florida. And I don't know what kind of work is being there. I don't know if any work is being done there. I'm not going to say I was the only one not to be doing anything, but I will pour out upon the children abroad, upon the assembly of the young men, together. For even the husband with his wife shall be taken. This is Babylon coming. Babylon's going to come upon all the people, regardless of age, regardless of, 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 of marital or single or widow. Babylon's coming. And they're going to be carried away, the Hebrews. Unto a place they don't even know the language. And that still can happen to America. America may get to the point of sin. There may be another country that comes in and, and, and conquers of Galatians, uh, Galatians 6 7. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth that he shall all through. Realize if God would say, okay, fine. You're in your pride, and America's in her pride. Even in the churches, they sing, I'm proud to be American. Oh, God is left it out. Just give me my gun to blow you away, and I'll give out a big shout. When the preacher calls out, we tell him to shut up. God says, okay, fine. I'll do the same thing that you did to the Native American. We'll swindle you, we'll take you for all your land, we'll kill you, and we'll put you in little places where you don't want to bully, and you just be intoxicated, wasted life. And that's what the American, the Europeans did to the Native Americans. And maybe one day, God will say, okay, day of reckoning. And I gotta wonder, this whole thing with this black lives and all that, I gotta wonder if that's God saying, okay, payment due for the Native American. Because the black people, I don't care what you say, the black people over there with Noah's son, he was to be servants of servants. America is now giving him a stand. America is giving him rights. Maybe they'll turn over and do to the European what we did to the, to the Native Americans. That'd be justice. Because you realize what, what Babylon did to Jerusalem, I'll curse them that curse you, and God hired him and God used him. The guy said, okay, day of reckoning, uh, uh, Belchizer. 
I'll send Cyrus in. Maybe one day God will have a group of people come in and say, Okay, America, what you did to the Native Americans, they are the children of self. Out. I'll take care of you. You're done. And, you know, your guns and all that. What instruments of weapons did Israel have? And God said, you ain't going to work. What instruments did Babylon have? Of Listen, Babylon used their weapons against Israel. And Babylon had no weapons against the Medes and the Persians. And then the Medes and Persians were, were, were conquered by Alexander the Great. And then he died drunken and gave it to his five military leaders and that went kapooey. Out of Hitler got into power and all that, he ended up, what they're saying, he burned himself, committed suicide, and his Nazi and all that, they flung away after the, you know, the, the, the sun never set upon the European Empire, they went away. When they said the King James, we don't want the King James, we, we, we want another perverted Bible, the Americans said we want the Americans there in the version. Listen, God's been merciful to this country, but it ain't going to last forever. All right, let's learn today that we've had another cyber attack. They're saying inflation is going to hit hard. You say, well, that's the meat. No, they've been saying that for years. And the media hasn't been reporting about that. And they just said the other day the cyber attack attacked the beef, the cow, the cattle. And it's going to attack the stock market. Huh? We love our hamburger. We love our steak and all that. And maybe you won't have it anymore. I don't know. Aged. Age, that means elderly. With him. That is full of days. No mercy. No regard for human life. Maybe there'll somebody come into America, attack America. Well, you know, we're, we're of this race of people. I don't care who you are. You died just as well as any other human being died. You know, the stuff and the racial tension that goes on in America, no other country will allow it. That if you try this in, in China, that they've come in with their truth and they just wipe you off the map and, and the media can't report it because the media can't have the power. You think you're going to do this stuff that you do in Korea, North Korea? Uh-uh. You think they're going to do this in, in Russia? How many black people do you think are in Russia? America's going to get it one day. She's either going to get it on this earth or she's going to get it at the great white throne judgment. She will stand before a holy and righteous God one day. And she's a sinner. And like Judah... And like Israel, she's got multiple gods in her. In her public schools, in her courtrooms, in her public buildings. But she doesn't have Jesus, and she doesn't have Jehovah, and she don't have the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Though she thinks she does. And their houses shall be turned unto others. Somebody else is going to take over. That's exactly what happened to Israel when they came in the land, wasn't it? They came in, they conquered the Canaan. Hey, I like this house. Okay, yours. And the gardens were already planted. You know, God had the Canaanites plant the garden, prune the orchard, take care of the vineyard. And Israel just came in and said, boom, you're dead. Hey, I like this house. Joshua, yeah. Over here, this plot, of the there's a nice little farm. All right, did you conquer them? I conquered. Okay, that's yours. Just rearrange the pictures, take down the false uh, altars and all that, get rid of the God, and then make it your home. They kept the fallen gods, they kept the images, they kept the altars, they kept they, they kept the groves, and God says, Babylon, yeah, go in there, take it. But I want you to do one step better than what happened to Israel. What's that? I want you to burn it. I want you to destroy it. That's what they were supposed to do. That's what the Jews were supposed to do. And they didn't. Disobedience. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There are things that God tells me to do I don't. And their fields. 
and their wives again. No, the wives show up twice. You know, it's funny when they're in the wilderness and they're going to the land of Cana. You know, it's quite interesting. You read about wives and cattle, cattle and wives. There seems to be that, that togetherness, the cows and the wives and the wives and the cows, cattle. That's weird. I hear the wives show up again. Your wife is going to be taken by Babylon. Your house is going to be taken by Babylon. Your wife may be killed. I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land of Israel, saith the Lord. Why? Because you are not doing right. You're not listening to me. You realize we are there not only as a nation, but we are there as the churches. And I ain't talking Presbyterian. I ain't talking Catholic. I ain't talking Methodist. I'm talking Baptist, born-again, Bible-believing churches. I can tell you about Bible-believing churches with face painting and bouncy houses. And we'll have a thing where we'll sell hot dogs. For the people that come and visit. That's no different from the Catholics. Listen, when I grew up as a kid, the things that are going on in the Baptist churches today, that only happened at the Catholic churches. The Catholic churches had the bazaars and had the, the bake sales and had the carnivals. You went to the Catholic church and had those events. They are in the Baptist churches today. Meanwhile, the Catholics are going door to door. The Catholics are having home Bible study. Man, we switch. You got the Baptist Catholic, you got the Catholic Baptist church. And the Baptists hate to hear it because it's the truth. And Paul said, have I become your enemy because I speak the truth? History has repeated itself. From the least of them, least of value, they have no say, no word. They don't, you know, they're just your common average people in the public. They go to work or they don't go to work or they're retired, their grandmas, grandpas, their children, they're, you know. They live in the villages. Unto the greatest of them, the king, the princes, the high and mighty, the, the, the rich ones. Everyone is given to covetousness. Now, isn't that a violation of the, the Big Ten? I want what you got. I, I want what I see on the TV screen. I want. I want what, what what I don't have. They got lust. They're not content with worldly goods. I mean, you know, you could be covet with God. Say, Lord, I want some more ministry. Me, I, I, I was talking to him, he goes, I want a wife, and I want a wife to, you know, for us to love each other and serve the Lord and have even better ministry for the Lord. And that's not covetousness. That's, hey, that's an aim and desire to please God. But if I want money and bank accounts and stocks, and I want bonds, and I want things above, and I want a greater house than I got, I want a boat so I can get away from the house I got, and I want to get a camper so I can get away from the boat that I get in the house that I have, and I want, you know, a big fancy car, and all that. that's, well, look at the lawnmower my neighbor got. <laughs> that thing's got one more horsepower than my lawnmower. Well, I got to go out and get one that's better than what he's got. Well, you know, you know, you know, we have 65 kids are a VBS. Well, we got to have 75. Well, our Sunday school, we had 10 people. Well, you know, I, we got to have 20. And we had more campaigns this year than you had campaigns. We had more baptisms. We had more people saved than your church. And that's covetousness in the church house there.
we had more chicken legs than you had. We had more birthday celebrations in our church, but we had very little new births. From the prophet, what's he doing being covetous? And with his covetousness, false prophet, in other words, I, I will give you what prophecy you want so I can get the most I can get. There are false prophets running around. Well, look at verse five, chapter five, verse thirty-one. And the prophets prophesied falsely. Why? Verse thirteen, chapter six. Their covetousness. You see, Stiley don't have a church. He doesn't have people that come and sit down in nice fancy pews air-conditioned place that will come and hear him preach. Now, he's got to go on the street and he's got to go force himself upon the people to hear his message. But, uh, you know, Sunday morning, you know, look, look at all the luxuries we got. And the Bible says, God says, hey, I love them feet that preach that God. I love that guy getting vitamin D in the floor of the sun. You, you're poor, Wretched, miserable, naked, and blind. Oh no, Lord, we're rich, we're great, we're wonderful. Yeah. You're worldly and you're carnal. From the prophet even to the priest. Look at chapter 5, verse 31. And the priests bear rule by their own means. Why? Because they're covetous. Well, if I give the message that the people want. You know, on Father's Day, if we give them a knife and a hat or give them a choice what they can have, and we give them a nice little fatherly message and try to encourage and don't tell them that they're rotten fathers and they've been raising their children terrible, that their, church, their children are not even in church today. No, 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 no. They won't come. For the Tamu's mass at the end of the year. We'll give them what they want. You want knife throwing axe? We'll give you knife throwing axe. You, you want chicken fried chicken? You want you want to have contests? Uh, 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 you know, a chili contest? That's what you want. We'll give it to you. Look how great our church is. Really? Well, oh, see, people hate you. They they, they, they despise you. They, they say you hate you. And, 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 yeah, but you know what? That's what they told Jesus, too. That's what they claimed Paul to be, too. You got people loving you. And then the Bible says, marvel not the world hates you. Somebody's doing something wrong. Let's look at the scripture. The priests, everyone, everyone did it. Even the false priests and the Levitical priests. God said everyone. That's not good. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly. <laughs> Doesn't that sound good? They have healed, I mean, you think, oh, they've healed the, the, the hurt of the door of my people, and God throws that one little word in there, and that's the only place that word shows up in the King James Bible. I mean, can you imagine Jeremiah? He's and they have healed the hurt of the door, and they're just they're, they're just overflowing, they're just puffing up, they're just pride sightly. He was doing good till he said that. And that's the only time that word is used in the Bible. They are doing no good to the people of Israel. They are doing no good to the people of Judah. And there are people in the ministry and the offices of the church, and they're doing very little to help the people, though they brag they're helping the people. I was in a church one time. You know, you need a car? Come to us. We'll get you a car. No problem. That family ended up get, getting ruined and destroyed in the end. And well, what I heard, it could be a rumor. So let me say, it could be a rumor. But they turned on the pastor. 
That could be a rumor. Let me say that before I say anything else. We'll do whatever we can for the people, and then they'll leave, or you know, they don't do nothing, or they just become dead and don't do nothing. And they don't grow, and then you got a church that doesn't grow. And then, like most of the churches today, outside of COVID-19, there are many well-known old churches that one time served the Lord with the Holy Spirit. They gave up on evangelism, and the church died out, and the doors closed. And we got a thing now, up to recently, where churches are merging into other churches so they can try to keep alive. I know one particular good church... I don't know about the church they mer merged into, but I know their school closed up. and I don't even know what happened to the two pastors. I know what happened to one of the pastors. He was in a parade in their school, and he's in some kind of tree trunk, kind of woodchuck, or some kind of... What was that? They got worldly, and they got carnal. And God said, close the door. Saying, now this is this is what they're saying. Peace, peace. When there is no peace. You know somebody runs around and keeps saying peace, 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 peace. The dumb pope in a row. That guy has never, and his predecessors have never had their prayer peace answer. Why are you listening to them? That Catholic church has started, you know, I, I had uh, I had many friends in Vietnam and Korea. And I, my boss was in Vietnam. He was, talk, they were talking one day a couple, I like the bikers. And they had a couple biker friends over. I was, I was in my office doing this, what I was doing. And they were just talking about Vietnam. And I, I kind of say, I mean, I was brand new saved. I didn't know what I was doing. And I, I stepped in. I said, God, can I just listen for the phones? And, you know, my job was, well, I said, can I just listen to you guys talk? I got to find it. And, and sure, you know, the best thing to do is listen to others. And they got talking. We were there for a while. And it was a dead after. I said, can I ask you just one stupid question? And then you say, I mean, you got these big bikers and all that. And, you know, they were going to go out and go get drunk at the bar afterwards and all that. I said, before you guys, I said, listen, let me ask you one question. This is no, listen, I, I support you, bike. I support the bikers. And we had we had the, the Pappy's Run ministry and all that. And, you know, POWs and MIA, man, listen, I'm sorry that happened to our men. And, and these men, they were in Vietnam. And I said, let me ask you one question. He goes, what's that? I believe they were all drafted, I think. I said, let me just ask you one question. I am not picking on you guys. But here's, why were you in Vietnam? And all, I don't know. I mean, our country sent us there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Why did our country send you over there? And one of those guys said to me, he said, no, that was the most confusing place I ever been. And there was a, there was a silence. Over, he says, and he asked, he goes, well, he goes, what's your name? I said, my name is Stiley. He goes, my boss had said a couple things. He said, you know, not only was the enemy trying to kill us, but he said, supposedly the people that we were trying over there, trying to help, was trying to kill. He, he, he said, one guy said, and then he started going to weird conversations. He said, yeah, we're over there. He goes, I was in the city marketplace. I was taking pictures and all that. And one of the people we were supposed to be defending and helping came up and stole my camera and flipped me off. And it was getting, now it was getting, I was like, that was the wrong question. And the question is, why were they there? I'll tell you why they were there. Because of the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church sent our troops over there. You know how many wars the Catholic Church and the United Nuts had started? And they say, and the Catholic, peace, peace. 
and you got the Baptist Catholics who are familiar with the way of the traditions of the Catholic Church, and they forgot it's the Catholic Church that killed our brethren and those that serve the Bible. That anybody who stood up for the publication and put in the Bible in the common people's language and in the common people's hands and in the farmer's hand to give them the Bible, there's a group of people called the Roman Catholic that killed our brethren doing that. Peace, peace. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. Your alcohol may give you peace, but it's only temporary peace. And Jesus acknowledged that there is a worldly peace, but it's not a fulfilling peace. It's not a eternal peace. It's a temporal peace that doesn't do nothing for nobody. We're going to stop right there. Pick up next time.